Jeremiah 10. Hear what the Lord says to you, people of Israel. This is what the Lord says. Do not learn the ways of the nations or be terrified by signs in the heavens, though the nations are terrified by them. For the practices of the peoples are worthless. They cut a tree out of the forest, and a craftsman shapes it with his chisel. They adorn it with silver and gold. They fasten it with hammer and nails, so it will not totter. Like a scarecrow in a cucumber field, their idols cannot speak. They must be carried because they cannot walk. Do not fear them. They can do no harm, nor can they do any good. No one is like you, Lord. You are great, and your name is mighty in power. Who should not fear you, King of the nations? This is your due. Among all the wise leaders of the nations and in all their kingdoms, there is no one like you. They are all senseless and foolish. They are taught by worthless wooden idols. Hammered silver is brought from Tarshish and gold from Uphaz. What the craftsman and goldsmith have made is then dressed in blue and purple, all made by skilled workers. But the Lord is the true God. He is the living God, the eternal King. When he is angry, the earth trembles. The nations cannot endure his wrath. Tell them this. These gods, who did not make the heavens and the earth, will perish from the earth and from under the heavens. But God made the earth by his power. He founded the world by his wisdom and stretched out the heavens by his understanding. When he thunders, the waters in the heavens roar. He makes clouds rise from the ends of the earth. He sends lightning with the rain and brings out the wind from his storehouses. Everyone is senseless and without knowledge. Every goldsmith is shamed by his idols. The images he makes are a fraud. They have no breath in them. They are worthless, the objects of mockery. When their judgment comes, they will perish. He who is the portion of Jacob is not like these, for he is the maker of all things including Israel, the people of his inheritance. The Lord Almighty is his name. Gather up your belongings to leave the land, you who live under siege. For this is what the Lord says. At this time, I will hurl out those who live in this land. I will bring distress on them so that they may be captured. Woe to me because of my injury. My wound is incurable. Yet I said to myself, This is my sickness, and I must endure it. My tent is destroyed, all its ropes are snapped. My children are gone from me and are no more. No one is left now to pitch my tent or to set up my shelter. The shepherds are senseless and do not inquire of the Lord, so they do not prosper and all their flock is scattered. Listen, the report is coming, a great commotion from the land of the north. It will make the towns of Judah desolate, a haunt of jackals. Lord, I know that people's lives are not their own. It is not for them to direct their steps. Discipline me, Lord, but only in due measure, not in your anger, or you will reduce me to nothing. Pour out your wrath on the nations that do not acknowledge you, on the peoples who do not call on your name. For they have devoured Jacob. They have devoured him completely and destroyed his homeland. Jeremiah 11. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Listen to the terms of this covenant and tell them to the people of Judah and to those who live in Jerusalem. Tell them that this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Cursed is the one who does not obey the terms of this covenant, the terms I commanded your ancestors when I brought them out of Egypt, out of the iron smelting furnace. I said, Obey me and do everything I command you, and you will be my people, and I will be your God. Then I will fulfill the oath I swore to your ancestors to give them a land flowing with milk and honey, the land you possess today. I answered, Amen, Lord. The Lord said to me, Proclaim all these words in the towns of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. Listen to the terms of this covenant and follow them. From the time I brought your ancestors up from Egypt until today, I warned them again and again, saying, Obey me. 
but they did not listen or pay attention. Instead, they followed the stubbornness of their evil hearts. So I brought on them all the curses of the covenant I had commanded them to follow, but that they did not keep. Then the Lord said to me, There is a conspiracy among the people of Judah and those who live in Jerusalem. They have returned to the sins of their ancestors, who refused to listen to my words. They have followed other gods to serve them. Both Israel and Judah have broken the covenant I made with their ancestors. Therefore, this is what the Lord says. I will bring on them a disaster they cannot escape. Although they cry out to me, I will not listen to them. The towns of Judah and the people of Jerusalem will go and cry out to the gods to whom they burn incense, but they will not help them at all when disaster strikes. You, Judah, have as many gods as you have towns, and the altars you have set up to burn incense to that shameful god Baal are as many as the streets of Jerusalem. Do not pray for this people or offer any plea or petition for them because I will not listen when they call to me in the time of their distress. What is my beloved doing in my temple as she, with many others, works out her evil schemes? Can consecrated meat avert your punishment? When you engage in your wickedness, then you rejoice. The Lord called you a thriving olive tree with fruit beautiful in form but with the roar of a mighty storm he will set it on fire and its branches will be broken. The Lord Almighty who planted you has decreed disaster for you because the people of both Israel and Judah have done evil and aroused my anger by burning incense to Baal. Because the Lord revealed their plot to me, I knew it, for at that time he showed me what they were doing. I had been like a gentle lamb led to the slaughter. I did not realize that they had plotted against me, saying, Let us destroy the tree and its fruit. Let us cut him off from the land of the living, that his name be remembered no more. But you, Lord Almighty, who judge righteously and test the heart and mind, let me see your vengeance on them, for to you I have committed my cause. Therefore, this is what the Lord says about the people of Anathoth, who are threatening to kill you, saying, Do not prophesy in the name of the Lord, or you will die by our hands. Therefore, this is what the Lord Almighty says, I will punish them. Their young men will die by the sword, their sons and daughters by famine. Not even a remnant will be left to them, because I will bring disaster on the people of Anathoth in the year of their punishment. Jeremiah 12. You're always righteous, Lord, when I bring a case before you. Yet I would speak with you about your justice. Why does the way of the wicked prosper? Why do all the faithless live at ease? You have planted them, and they have taken root. They grow and bear fruit. You are always on their lips, but far from their hearts. Yet you know me, Lord. You see me and test my thoughts about you. Drag them off like sheep to be butchered. Set them apart for the day of slaughter. How long will the land lie parched and the grass in every field be withered? Because those who live in it are wicked, the animals and birds have perished. Moreover, the people are saying, you will not see what happens to us. If you have raced with men on foot, and they have worn you out, how can you compete with horses? If you stumble in safe country, how will you manage in the thickets by the Jordan? Your relatives, members of your own family, even they have betrayed you. They have raised a loud cry against you. Do not trust them, though they speak well of you. I will forsake my house, abandon my inheritance. I will give the one I love into the hands of her enemies. My inheritance has become to me like a lion in the forest. She roars at me, therefore I hate her. Has not my inheritance become to me like a speckled bird of prey, that other birds of prey surround and attack? Go and gather all the wild beasts, bring them to devour. Many shepherds will ruin my vineyard and trample down my field. They will turn my pleasant field into a desolate wasteland. It will be made a wasteland, parched and 
desolate before me, the whole land will be laid waste because there is no one who cares. Over all the barren heights in the desert, destroyers will swarm, for the sword of the Lord will devour from one end of the land to the other. No one will be safe. They will sow wheat, but reap thorns. They will wear themselves out, but gain nothing. They will bear the shame of their harvest because of the Lord's fierce anger. This is what the Lord says. As for all my wicked neighbors who seized the inheritance I gave my people Israel, I will uproot them from their lands, and I will uproot the people of Judah from among them. But after I uproot them, I will again have compassion and will bring each of them back to their own inheritance and their own country. And if they learn well the ways of my people and swear by my name, saying, As surely as the Lord lives, even as they once taught my people to swear by Baal, then they will be established among my people. But if any nation does not listen, I will completely uproot and destroy it, declares the Lord. Jeremiah 13 This is what the Lord said to me, Go and buy a linen belt and put it around your waist, but do not let it touch water. So I bought a belt, as the Lord directed, and put it around my waist. Then the word of the Lord came to me a second time, Take the belt you bought and are wearing around your waist, and go now to Pirath, and hide it there in a crevice in the rocks. So I went and hid it at Pirath, as the Lord told me. Many days later the Lord said to me, Go now to Pirath, and get the belt I told you to hide there. So I went to Pirath, and dug up the belt, and took it from the place where I had hidden it. But now it was ruined and completely useless. Then the word of the Lord came to me. This is what the Lord says. In the same way I will ruin the pride of Judah and the great pride of Jerusalem. These wicked people who refuse to listen to my words, who follow the stubbornness of their hearts and go after other gods to serve and worship them, will be like this belt, completely useless. For as a belt is bound around the waist, so I bound all the people of Israel and all the people of Judah to me, declares the Lord to be my people for my renown and praise and honor. But they have not listened. Say to them, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Every wineskin should be filled with wine. And if they say to you, Don't we know that every wineskin should be filled with wine? Then tell them, This is what the Lord says. I am going to fill with drunkenness all who live in this land, including the kings who sit on David's throne, the priests, the prophets, and all those living in Jerusalem. I will smash them one against the other, parents and children alike, declares the Lord. I will allow no pity or mercy or compassion to keep me from destroying them. Hear and pay attention. Do not be arrogant. For the Lord has spoken. Give glory to the Lord your God before he brings the darkness, before your feet stumble on the darkening hills. You hope for light, but he will turn it to utter darkness and change it to deep gloom. If you do not listen, I will weep in secret because of your pride. My eyes will weep bitterly, overflowing with tears, because the Lord's flock will be taken captive. Say to the king and to the queen mother, Come down from your thrones, for your glorious crowns will fall from your heads. The cities in the Negev will be shut up, and there will be no one to open them. All Judah will be carried into exile, carried completely away. Look up and see those who are coming from the north. Where is the flock that was entrusted to you, the sheep of which you boasted? What will you say when the Lord sets over you those you cultivated as your special allies? Will not pain grip you? like that of a woman in labor. And if you ask yourself, why has this happened to me? It is because of your many sins that your skirts have been torn off and your body mistreated. Can an Ethiopian change his skin or a leopard its spots? Neither can you do good who are accustomed to doing evil. I will scatter you like chaff driven by the desert wind. This is your lot, the portion I have decreed for you, declares the Lord because you have forgotten me 
and trusted in false gods. I will pull up your skirts over your face, that your shame may be seen. Your adulteries and lustful names, your shameless prostitution. I have seen your detestable acts on the hills and in the fields. Woe to you, Jerusalem! How long will you be unclean? Jeremiah 14 This is the word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah concerning the drought. Judah mourns, her cities languish, they wail for the land. And a cry goes up from Jerusalem. The nobles send their servants for water. They go to the cisterns, but find no water. They return with their jars unfilled, dismayed and despairing. They cover their heads. The ground is cracked because there is no rain in the land. The farmers are dismayed and cover their heads. Even the doe in the field deserts her newborn fawn because there is no grass. While donkeys stand on the barren heights and pant like jackals, their eyes fail for lack of food. Although our sins testify against us, do something, Lord, for the sake of your name. For we have often rebelled, we have sinned against you. You who are the hope of Israel, its Savior in times of distress, why are you like a stranger in the land, like a traveler who stays only a night? Why are you like a man taken by surprise, like a warrior, powerless to save? You are among us, Lord, and we bear your name. Do not forsake us. This is what the Lord says about this people. They greatly love to wander. They do not restrain their feet. So the Lord does not accept them. He will now remember their wickedness and punish them for their sins. Then the Lord said to me, Do not pray for the well-being of this people. Although they fast, I will not listen to their cry. Though they offer burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. Instead, I will destroy them with the sword, famine, and plague. But I said, Alas, sovereign Lord, the prophets keep telling them, You will not see the sword or suffer famine. Indeed, I will give you lasting peace in this place. Then the Lord said to me, The prophets are prophesying lies in my name. I have not sent them or appointed them or spoken to them. They are prophesying to you false visions, divinations, idolatries, and the delusions of their own minds. Therefore, this is what the Lord says about the prophets who are prophesying in my name. I did not send them, yet they are saying, No sword or famine will touch this land. Those same prophets will perish by sword and famine, and the people they are prophesying to will be thrown out into the streets of Jerusalem because of the famine and sword. There will be no one to bury them their wives, their sons and their daughters. I will pour out on them the calamity they deserve. Speak this word to them. Let my eyes overflow with tears night and day without ceasing. For the virgin daughter my people has suffered a grievous wound, a crushing blow. If I go into the country, I see those slain by the sword. If I go into the city, I see the ravages of famine. Both prophet and priest have gone to a land they know not. Have you rejected Judah completely? Do you despise Zion? Why have you afflicted us so that we cannot be healed? We hoped for peace, but no good has come. For a time of healing, but there is only terror. We acknowledge our wickedness, Lord, and the guilt of our ancestors. We have indeed sinned against you. For the sake of your name, do not despise us. Do not dishonor your glorious throne. Remember your covenant with us and do not break it. Do any of the worthless idols of the nations bring rain? Do the skies themselves send down showers? No, it is you, Lord our God. Therefore our hope is in you, for you are the one who does all this. Jeremiah 15 Then the Lord said to me, Even if Moses and Samuel were to stand before me, my heart would not go out to this people. Send them away from my presence. Let them go, and if they ask you, where shall we go? Tell them. This is what the Lord says. Those destined for death, to death. Those for the sword, to the sword. Those for starvation, to starvation. Those for captivity, to captivity. I will send four kinds of destroyers against them, declares the Lord. The sword to kill, and the dogs to drag away, and the birds and the wild animals to devour and destroy. I will make them abhorrent, 
to all the kingdoms of the earth because of what Manasseh, son of Hezekiah, king of Judah, did in Jerusalem. Who will have pity on you, Jerusalem? Who will mourn for you? Who will stop to ask how you are? You have rejected me, declares the Lord. You keep on backsliding. So I will reach out and destroy you. I am tired of holding back. I will winnow them with a winnowing fork at the city gates of the land. I will bring bereavement and destruction on my people, for they have not changed their ways. I will make their widows more numerous than the sand of the sea. At midday, I will bring a destroyer against the mothers of their young men. Suddenly I will bring down on them anguish and terror. The mother of seven will grow faint and breathe her last. Her sun will set while it is still day. She will be disgraced and humiliated. I will put the survivors to the sword before their enemies, declares the Lord. Alas, my mother that you gave me birth, a man with whom the whole land strives and contends, I have neither lent nor borrowed, yet everyone curses me. The Lord says, Surely I will deliver you for a good purpose. Surely I will make your enemies plead with you in times of disaster and times of distress. Can a man break iron, iron from the north or bronze? Your wealth and your treasures I will give as plunder without charge because of all your sins throughout your country. I will enslave you to your enemies in a land you do not know, for my anger will kindle a fire that will burn against you. Lord, you understand. Remember me and care for me. Avenge me on my persecutors. You are long-suffering. Do not take me away. Think of how I suffer reproach for your sake. When your words came, I ate them. They were my joy and my heart's delight. For I bear your name, Lord God Almighty. I never sat in the company of revelers, never made merry with them. I sat alone because your hand was on me, and you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unending and my wound grievous and incurable? You are to me like a deceptive brook, like a spring that fails. Therefore, this is what the Lord says. If you repent, I will restore you, that you may serve me. If you utter worthy, not worthless words, you will be my spokesman. Let this people turn to you, but you must not turn to them. I will make you a wall to this people, a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but will not overcome you. For I am with you to rescue and save you, declares the Lord. I will save you from the hands of the wicked and deliver you from the grasp of the cruel. Jeremiah 16 Then the word of the Lord came to me. You must not marry and have sons or daughters in this place. For this is what the Lord says about the sons and daughters born in this land and about the women who are their mothers and the men who are their fathers. They will die of deadly diseases. They will not be mourned or buried, but will be like dung lying on the ground. They will perish by the sword and famine, and their dead bodies will become food for the birds and the wild animals. For this is what the Lord says. Do not enter a house where there is a funeral meal. Do not go to mourn or show sympathy, because I have withdrawn my blessing, my love, and my pity from this people, declares the Lord. Both high and low will die in this land. They will not be buried or mourned, and no one will cut themselves or shave their head for the dead. No one will offer food to comfort those who mourn for the dead, not even for a father or a mother, nor will anyone give them a drink to console them. And do not enter a house where there is feasting and sit down to eat and drink, for this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. Before your eyes and in your days I will bring an end to the sounds of joy and gladness and to the voices of bride and bridegroom in this place. When you tell these people all this and they ask you, Why has the Lord decreed such a great disaster against us? What wrong have we done? What sin have we committed against the Lord our God? Then say to them, It is because your ancestors forsook me, declares the Lord and followed other gods, and served and worshipped them. They forsook me and did not keep my law. 
but you have behaved more wickedly than your ancestors. See how all of you are following the stubbornness of your evil hearts instead of obeying me. So I will throw you out of this land into a land neither you nor your ancestors have known. And there you will serve other gods day and night, for I will show you no favor. However, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when it will no longer be said, as surely as the Lord lives, who brought the Israelites up out of Egypt, but it will be said, as surely as the Lord lives, who brought the Israelites up out of the land of the north and out of all the countries where he had banished them. For I will restore them to the land I gave their ancestors. But now I will send for many fishermen, declares the Lord, and they will catch them. After that I will send for many hunters, and they will hunt them down on every mountain and hill and from the crevices of the rocks. My eyes are on all their ways. They are not hidden from me, nor is their sin concealed from my eyes. I will repay them double for their wickedness and their sin, because they have defiled my land with the lifeless forms of their vile images and have filled my inheritance with their detestable idols. Lord, my strength and my fortress, my refuge in time of distress, to you the nations will come from the ends of the earth and say, Our ancestors possess nothing but false gods, worthless idols that did them no good. Do people make their own gods? Yes, but they are not gods. Therefore I will teach them. This time I will teach them my power and might. Then they will know that my name is the Lord. Jeremiah 17 Judah's sin is engraved with an iron tool inscribed with a flint point on the tablets of their hearts and on the horns of their altars. Even their children remember their altars and ashra poles beside the spreading trees and on the high hills. My mountain in the land and your wealth and all your treasures I will give away as plunder together with your high places because of sin throughout your country. Through your own fault you will lose the inheritance I gave you. I will enslave you to your enemies in a land you do not know. For you have kindled my anger and it will burn forever. This is what the Lord says. Curse is the one who trusts in man, who draws strength from mere flesh, and whose heart turns away from the Lord. That person will be like a bush in the wastelands, they will not see prosperity when it comes. They will dwell in the parched places of the desert, in a salt land where no one lives. But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in Him. They will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, search the heart and examine the mind to reward each person according to their conduct, according to what their deeds deserve. Like a partridge that hatches eggs it did not lay are those who gain riches by unjust means. When their lives are half gone, their riches will desert them, and in the end they will prove to be fools. The glorious throne, exalted from the beginning, is the place of our sanctuary. Lord, you are the hope of Israel. All who forsake you will be put to shame. Those who turn away from you will be written in the dust because they have forsaken the Lord, the spring of living water. Heal me, Lord, and I will be healed. Save me, and I will be saved. For you are the one I praise. They keep saying to me, Where is the word of the Lord? Let it now be fulfilled. I have not run away from being your shepherd. You know I have not desired the day of despair. What passes my lips is open before you. Do not be a terror to me. You are my refuge in the day of disaster. Let my persecutors be put to shame, but keep me from shame. Let them be terrified, but keep me from terror. Bring on them the day of disaster. Destroy them with double destruction. 
This is what the Lord said to me. Go and stand at the gate of the people, through which the kings of Judah go in and out. Stand also at all the other gates of Jerusalem. Say to them, Hear the word of the Lord, you kings of Judah and all people of Judah and everyone living in Jerusalem who come through these gates. This is what the Lord says. Be careful not to carry a load on the Sabbath day or bring it through the gates of Jerusalem. Do not bring a load out of your houses or do any work on the Sabbath, but keep the Sabbath day holy as I commanded your ancestors. Yet they did not listen or pay attention. They were stiff-necked and would not listen or respond to discipline. But if you are careful to obey me, declares the Lord, and bring no load through the gates of this city on the Sabbath, but keep the Sabbath day holy by not doing any work on it, then kings who sit on David's throne will come through the gates of this city with their officials. They and their officials will come riding in chariots and on horses, accompanied by the men of Judah and those living in Jerusalem, and this city will be inhabited forever. People will come from the towns of Judah and the villages around Jerusalem, from the territory of Benjamin and the western foothills, from the hill country and the Negev, bringing burnt offerings and sacrifices, grain offerings and incense, and bringing thank offerings to the house of the Lord. But if you do not obey me to keep the Sabbath day holy, by not carrying any load as you come through the gates of Jerusalem on the Sabbath day, then I will kindle an unquenchable fire in the gates of Jerusalem that will consume her fortresses. Jeremiah 18 This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Go down to the potter's house, and there I will give you my message. So I went down to the potter's house, and I saw him working at the wheel. But the pot he was shaping from the clay was marred in his hands. So the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it as seemed best to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me. He said, Can I not do with you, Israel, as this potter does, declares the Lord, like clay in the hand of the potter? So are you in my hand, Israel. If at any time I announce that a nation or kingdom is to be uprooted, torn down, and destroyed, and if that nation I warned repents of its evil, then I will relent and not inflict on it the disaster I had planned. And if at another time I announce that a nation or kingdom is to be built up and planted, and if it does evil in my sight and does not obey me, then I will reconsider the good I had intended to do for it. Now therefore say to the people of Judah and those living in Jerusalem, This is what the Lord says, Look, I am preparing a disaster for you and devising a plan against you. So turn from your evil ways, each one of you, and reform your ways and your actions. But they will reply, It's no use. We will continue with our own plans. We will all follow the stubbornness of our evil hearts. Therefore, this is what the Lord says. Inquire among the nations. Who has ever heard anything like this? A most horrible thing has been done by virgin Israel. Does the snow of Lebanon ever vanish from its rocky slopes? Do its cool waters from distant sources ever stop flowing? Yet my people have forgotten me. They burn incense to worthless idols, which made them stumble in their ways, in the ancient paths. They made them walk in byways, on roads not built up. Their land will be an object of horror and of lasting scorn. All who pass by will be appalled and will shake their heads. Like a wind from the east, I will scatter them before their enemies. I will show them my back and not my face in the day of their disaster. They said, Come, let's make plans against Jeremiah, for the teaching of the law by the priest will not cease, nor will counsel from the wise, nor the word from the prophets. So come. Let's attack him with our tongues, and pay no attention to anything he says. Listen to me, Lord. Hear what my accusers are saying. Should good be repaid with evil? Yet they have dug a pit for me. Remember that I stood before you and spoke in their behalf to turn your wrath away from them. So give their children over to famine, hand them over to the power of the sword. Let their wives be made 
childless and widows, let their men be put to death, their young men slain by the sword in battle. Let a cry be heard from their houses when you suddenly bring invaders against them. For they have dug a pit to capture me, and have hidden snares for my feet. But you, Lord, know all their plots to kill me. Do not forgive their crimes or blot out their sins from your sight. Let them be overthrown before you. Deal with them in the time of your anger. Jeremiah 19 This is what the Lord says. Go and buy a clay jar from a potter. Take along some of the elders of the people and of the priest and go out to the valley of Ben-Hinnom, near the entrance of the potsherd gate. There proclaim the words I tell you and say, Hear the word of the Lord, you kings of Judah and people of Jerusalem. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. Listen, I am going to bring a disaster on this place that will make the ears of everyone who hears of it tingle. For they have forsaken me and made this a place of foreign gods. They have burned incense in it to gods that neither they nor their ancestors, nor the kings of Judah ever knew, and they have filled this place with the blood of the innocent. They have built the high places of Baal to burn their children in the fire as offerings to Baal, something I did not command or mention, nor did it enter my mind. So beware, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when people will no longer call this place Topheth, or the valley of Ben-Hinnom, but the valley of slaughter, in this place, I will ruin the plans of Judah and Jerusalem. I will make them fall by the sword before their enemies, at the hands of those who want to kill them. And I will give their carcasses as food to the birds and the wild animals. I will devastate this city and make it an object of horror and scorn. All who pass by will be appalled and will scoff because of all its wounds. I will make them eat the flesh of their sons and daughters and they will eat one another's flesh because their enemies will press the siege so hard against them to destroy them. Then break the jar while those who go with you are watching and say to them, This is what the Lord Almighty says, I will smash this nation and this city just as this potter's jar is smashed and cannot be repaired. They will bury the dead in Topheth until there is no more room. This is what I will do to this place and to those who live here, declares the Lord, I will make this city like Topheth. The houses in Jerusalem and those of the kings of Judah will be defiled like this place, Topheth. All the houses where they burned incense on the roofs to all the starry hosts and poured out drink offerings to other gods. Jeremiah then returned from Topheth, where the Lord had sent him to prophesy, and stood in the court of the Lord's temple, and said to all the people, This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says, Listen, I am going to bring on this city and all the villages around it every disaster I pronounced against them, because they were stiff-necked and would not listen to my words.